Around 90% of people who suffer an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest won't survive, making what happened with Christian Erickson a truly remarkable story and one that hopefully we can all learn from. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. In this video, we're gonna expand on what happened over the weekend with Christian Erickson. First off, I wanna make it very clear that this had absolutely nothing to do with the vaccine. Those initial reports that he had have since been dispelled as myths and so I don't wanna hear any more discussion about this being related to the vaccine. Denmark's team physician also provided a really nice statement about what exactly unfolded as they got out there to take care of Erickson. When it comes to cardiac arrest, time is everything. Research has shown that survival decreases by around 10% for every minute that CPR is delayed. There was some initial criticism about how long it took for them to perform CPR, but according to their team doctor who was out there, when he first got out on the field, he actually had a pulse. He was breathing. There was no reason for them to start CPR when they were out there. So it's very reassuring that as soon as the pulse left, they were right there. They were able to start CPR as quickly as possible and get that defibrillator on him as well. CPR and chest compressions in and of themselves are going to help improve survival, but it's most important to get that defibrillator there and on as quickly as possible. Their team doctor confirmed that it was cardiac arrest and that he was gone. They did cardiac resuscitation and they got him back after one defibrillator shock. So essentially the AED analyzed his rhythm as we'll talk about in a minute here, shocked once and that initial shock was enough to restore that normal rhythm and as we saw, regain his consciousness and save his life. Our biodigital anatomy tool here is showing normal sinus rhythm, normal cardiac function with squeezing and contractility of the different chambers of the heart. Our heart has a built-in electrical conduction system that allows for that electrical signal to propagate through the different chambers of the heart in a synchronized fashion that allow it to squeeze in proper coordination. As that signal propagates through, it stimulates those heart muscle cells to contract, which causes the blood to be pumped through the heart and then out to the body. But in the case of an arrhythmia, such as ventricular tachycardia, that electrical conduction signal gets disorganized. It gets damaged in a way that it doesn't conduct normally and the heart can't squeeze in the proper way and so you don't get blood out to the body. That's why you don't feel a pulse. The heart can be quivering and still trying to beat, but it's not doing it in the proper way, and so it's not successful in getting blood to the body. If we were to look at the heart during an arrhythmia, it might look something like this, a very disorganized, quivering sort of appearance, unsuccessfully pumping blood to the body. So when somebody has cardiac arrest from a specific arrhythmia, such as this ventricular tachycardia, the goal with defibrillation is to shock that electrical system to restore that normal pathway and restore that normal beat. The American Heart Association has all these great algorithms that we follow in these situations as healthcare providers. And the nice thing about the defibrillators is that they actually analyze that electrical rhythm of the heart before deciding if you even can apply that shock. You'll see this first pathway here is asking whether or not the rhythm is shockable. There's two shockable rhythms, ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia. But there's other cases where the cardiac arrest is from either a systole, where there's basically no electrical activity and it's just a flat line, or PEA, which is pulseless electrical activity. And we proceed down this pathway. We deliver a shock and then we resume CPR for two minutes. We reassess the rhythm if we need to. We shock again. We have medicines that we can give. And so we have this whole algorithm that we follow to deliver a shock from the defibrillator, depending on if it's shockable, and then give these medications and continue CPR. The last thing I wanna discuss that's now at the forefront of everybody's mind that we know he's stable and survived this is what caused this? Will he be able to play football again? The first step for the medical team here is really to determine if it's from the heart itself or something external to the heart that happened and caused the heart to go into cardiac arrest. During the cardiac arrest, while they're doing their resuscitation, providers will go through what we call our H's and T's reversible causes of cardiac arrest that are external to the heart that are causing some trauma or damage to the heart giving you that cardiac arrest. If you can discover one of these things, reverse the effects of the cardiac arrest, then there might not be a problem with the actual heart itself. But when we're talking about sudden cardiac arrest, and in particular cardiac arrest and cardiac death in athletes, we're talking about something within the heart itself. There's different ways we can divide these, but one way is between if you have a structurally normal heart or a structurally abnormal heart. With the structural causes, it's something inherent to the way that the heart looks or appears with how thick it is in different areas. Compared to the non-structural causes, those are more with the rhythm, that conducting system, the electrical pathways more microscopic changes in the heart that are going to cause that sudden cardiac arrest or death. This is an excellent study. I'll link it down below. It's free to access. And it looked at sudden cardiac arrest and sudden cardiac death 
in athletes in the United States over a period from 2014 to 2018. The average age was around 16, but it considered kids from middle school up to professional athletes. They captured 331 cases of either sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death, and of that group, there were 158 survivors. And this chart broke down all the different causes of that arrest or the cardiac death. The most common in this population, and if you look at most resources, what they'll say is the most common, is something called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a genetic abnormality that results in abnormal structure of the heart. But there's a lot of other things that can cause sudden cardiac arrest in athletes, and so that's what these doctors are now going to try to figure out here with Erickson. But what's important to remember is that sometimes they will not find the cause. Between all the echoes, the EKGs, the cardiac MRIs, the stress tests, etc., nothing will ever come up abnormal. This isn't that common, but don't be surprised if we never hear about exactly what happened. You almost hope that you find something so that you can try to reverse it and prevent things from happening again. But it is certainly possible that the medical staff just simply won't be able to find anything, not because of incompetence or not looking hard enough, but because of the nature of how these can sometimes present. And that leads well into this last point of people who wonder if something was missed when he had his medical evaluations or his medical screenings at any of his past clubs or currently with his team. There's an extensive medical evaluation that all athletes undergo, whether they're in middle school, high school, or professional athletes competing in UEFA League. I'll link this down below. This is specifically UEFA's medical regulation for athletes participating in UEFA sanctioned events. In this, they specifically walk through what every athlete has to undergo for their medical evaluation, with looking at medical records, the family history, to see if there was any history of sudden cardiac death. What they're trying to do is go through all the common things that could be in the history that could lead to cardiac death or other things that they might need to treat in the athlete. It details what needs to be done in terms of the medical examination, a neurologic screen, and then it even gets into the cardiac evaluation. They're gonna have an EKG done, looking at the rhythm of the heart to try to detect any of these arrhythmias. But then also every two years, they have to have an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart to look for, again, those structural abnormalities. Remember, the doctors are trying to pick up either those non-structural or those structural abnormalities that lead to the most common causes of sudden cardiac death in athletes. So Erickson would have gone through extensive prior screening to look for these types of things. But again, this gets back to sometimes in these cases, we simply don't find anything or all these tests come out normal because no test is going to be 100% perfect. And that's why we have these medical protocols that looked like they were followed to a T. The doctors there at the event, the defibrillators on standby, the medical personnel on standby to come out and save his life in this situation. The biggest thing I hope the general public takes away from this is the importance of CPR. And being concerned about giving rescue breaths isn't even an excuse anymore because now you can do hands-only CPR. You always wanna err on the side of this person who's down in front of you having cardiac arrest. I'm gonna link a video here that goes over just basics from the American Heart Association of hands-only CPR, just chest compressions. It's a simple skill that everybody in the public, as far as I'm concerned, should be aware of and should know how to do. I encourage you to watch that video. I encourage you to check out the American Heart Association and get signed up or take an online class to learn basic life support because you never know when you could be in a situation where somebody might need your help to save their life. That's it for the video, everybody. I hope this update was educational for you all. Again, if we learn about what exactly is happening here or what caused the cardiac arrest, I'll do another video on that. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.